You know, it felt like like even though even though I was free, I knew that I couldn't be careless. Yeah. Because it was about making contingency plans to keep away from there and not get captured. And plus your face has been known because it's off through all the papers. <laughs> face, let me tell you something. <laughs> I was out of Fortnite on this one. Yeah. I escaped twice, as you know. And um, I was in a safe house. And I thought, yeah, give me a day or two. I'm going to be on the front news. And I was. I thought, great. I thought, I'd die off, no problem. <clears throat> First week, full week, on the newspaper, front page. I thought, that's it, weekend, they're going to forget go. about me. Following week, I'm in the newspaper again. <sighs> Next minute, they're throwing rewards up. And I thought, they're desperate for me. <laughs> desperate. And they were. Let's go back. You've just got out, thrown the keys. What's your strategy now? At that moment, my strategy was to keep going forward. You know? Um, stay out. Stay out, that was the main thing. Yeah. Cloak and dagger stuff now comes into play. Um, given the fact that, you know, I've, I've not been round town, Bolton Town Centre before in my life. So it was, which direction do I go? Where do I go? And it's just by coincidence, I went across this field, climbed a big brick wall, went through a graveyard, climbed another brick wall, went down an embankment. It was a stream, you know, tried to make it go, fell in the stream, just laughed it off, got up. And when I got to the top of the embankment, there was um, a railway track. And I thought, which way do I go? Left or right? And they don't say, no, go, go left. And I ran all the way from Bolton all the way to Southport. Wow. On the track. Yeah. What are you wearing? Is it prison stuff? Or... No, my own stuff. Your my own, own clothing, stuff? yeah. So you don't look like you're on the road? No, no. But luckily, the further I got out, the more rural it became. Which and is so better got to for Southport, you. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? And eventually, I ended up in the central... Town of Southport, you know, the, the, the pier way, that way. How I many went, hours have you been on the run now? By the time by the time I got there, it was touching between four and five okay. in the evening. You know, I escaped two early hours in the morning. So you know they're coming at this point? They're, they're on to you? No, not at that moment. Okay. They didn't even know I'd gone yet. Okay. That was the, that was the, that was the laughable thing about it. They thought I was still in bed asleep. Yeah. Um, the only she, reason why... She got couldn't... a good distance then? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the only the only reason why it came on top eventually because they come in to feed me because I didn't wake up from my breakfast and mm. all that. They thought, oh, let him sleep. He's not bothering. And eventually when they're coming to, apparently he touched the sleeping bag and his hand went right down to the bottom of the bed. <laughs> hilarious. So I will imagine he startled the expression and say, hold on, where's Udini going here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how many hours exactly did you reckon before they noticed that? Um, they noticed that, right, from, from my understanding, you're talking, I must have went round about, if I had to calculate it, between 11 and 12 at night, I reckon I went. Okay, so you've got yeah. a good nine, ten hours on them then. Yeah. Are you still in Southport then at this point? Well, I got to Southport. Yeah. Went to the, the main recess, toilet area, yeah. energy come on, and then I come out, and I thought, I need to get to Liverpool now. Were you hungry or just adrenaline? I ate a cabbage on the way from the farmer's fields. Did you? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, resourceful too, eh? Hey? Hey, resourceful, but hey, it's not like eating, brother. I know how Bugs Bunny feels, believe yeah. me. You. <laughs> Do you remember when Rambo escaped from the police station? He yeah. Like on raw plants and animals. <laughs> and <stuff. laughs> so, um, what you call it? Um, I came out and I went over to the parking attendant. I says, excuse me, man, I'm a bit lost here. Where's the um, train station for Liverpool? He gave me the directions, so I walked there. And I got there and I see him and I thought, what do I do here? I can't just get on the train because we're dealing with built um, train station here. Yeah. And the last thing I want is get off, approach the your uh, ticket and they go, where's your ticket? You know? Yeah. I need to avoid any type of curiosity. Confrontation. And um, I got there. And I looked at him, I said, I said, I need a favour here, mate. He said, what's that? I said, I'll come down in my car. Somebody's robbed in me, me car and took my wallet. I've got no, he said, it's on me, mate. Don't worry about it. I said, oh, nice one, lad. Sweet. Fair enough, isn't it? Yeah. So when I got to Liverpool, I had to deal with the taxi service now. Because a friend of mine, God bless him, he passed away. And um, Vince um, was in jail with him. Yeah. <clears throat> and he was from Lagos. He was over here for drug smuggling. 
So I knew his address, his family's address. Ah. And um, I thought I need to get to there. And um, I had to deal with the taxi. So I went to the black cab and I said, um, can you send me to this address, please? I didn't have a clue when anybody was in or what. I was just taking a chance. I had visions of like, open the door and run. (laughs) So I'm presuming you're around Tox as well. Um, More or less, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, what's happened, he pulled up. And just as he pulled up, somebody came out the front door walking down, some young lad. And I've got out and I said, pay the taxi and carried on. (laughs) (laughs) And within seconds, his wife come. She knew about me, she knew off me and all that. She said, right, blah. And I made her contact another number. And within three quarters of an hour, they come round, got me and took me to the safe house. Nice. So oh. nice. And I was in the bath when they come, by the way, having a bath. And when they come, I just got the towel on me, ran down the stairs. <laughs> so you go to the safe house and they come to that safe house, the cops? Eventually, yes. Okay, eventually. So what happens in, in between that? Um, well, I'm, I'm in the safe house. Yeah. Um, and again, my... I've got to put my cockiness to a degree. Yeah. Um, on the Monday, let's say about 12 o'clock, a couple of fellas that I knew come and said, we can get you out of the country. Now I'll, I went, oh, leave it, leave it. Don't rush it. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, <clears throat> four days later... When we're ready to go, everything's ready now. Get me out of the country. Got the money, got new clothes, got the transport, know where we're going. Unfortunately, the person that was going to take me on their boat across to Southern Ireland was in contact with the police. Mm. It was a catch-22, though, either way. Yes, it was. Because you needed the money in that anyway, so you yeah, had to wait, yeah. didn't you? Yes. There's no point in going to scheme, was there? You know what I mean? Well, well, it's not, well, I can't get up and go without provisions. Yeah. It makes it even more mm. difficult. And, um, and if you go skinny, you're having to rob and stuff, and you're putting yourself on top all yes. the time. So, was, yeah. I mean, you had to wait to get your coin. Of course. Mm. And um, what's happened, um, this particular lady, she had a home boat, 40 foot cruiser. Mm. She's based in Manchester. So, um, 18 fellas that I knew, gentlemen, went to pick her up. Before they brought her back, they staked it all out. You know, north, south, east and west, even up and down. Make sure. Yeah. Brought her back. A few diversions. Make sure there's no reconnaissance watching, following. And um, <clears throat> everything seemed fine. Brought her in the house. Sat there talking. My plan was to go out at 11 o'clock. Mm. And I'll never forget. I'm sat there. I'm 5 to 11. I heard the helicopter and I knew. I knew the speed, the lowness, I knew. And all soon it's above the house, boom, 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 I'm up. <clears throat> and I ran to the back of the kitchen. I didn't open the door. No. I just went diving through the glass and diving through the door. Landed on the landed on the pavement. But instinct told me straight away. Up, ran to the back wall, and I was up and over. But I didn't get over immediately <clears throat> because the, pl- the, the police had surrounded the house, 65, 64 coppers, armed Gee police. Hell. So I jumped on, I went to jump over the right hand side of the wall, one ran at it with a pickaxe handle, or whatever it was, jumped down, and there was a coal shed on the left hand side and all. <clears throat> got on the wall and got on that, stood there. It was like um, a theatrical stage, because the helicopter's there with the floodlight on me. <laughs> like all these coppers around the house, all behind me on the glass looking through it at me like that. One got up there, plane's closed. Obviously, he had the revolver there, I could see it. <clears throat> and he went, come on, Lord, he give yourself up. And we went, fuck off, you bunch of bastards. <laughs> and, I, and I ran across the top of the wall on the left-hand side and jumped from that back garden wall over the alley into the next backyard. And I ended up doing that going through six houses. Wow. Diving through the windows. <laughs> diving through the windows, the old glass frame, the old lot. <clears throat> you had to do that, what's your corridor, street? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what, right? Surprise, surprise. When I got to that window ledge, the sill, I didn't realise how high they were. All oh, right, right. There. Mm. I thought they were only down there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I made that the ledge when I got there. I went, wow. Mm. And I've done it. And as I've gone through the glass and all that, I've landed, I've hit some table. Some bloke went like that in his chair. And the woman went, oh. But I didn't stop. I found the front door immediately. Yeah. Surprise. But rather than open it, Oh, right through the old lot, the glass, the lot. 
Did you like opening doors back then? No, or? no, no. <laughs> no, no <laughs> and I went through um, six houses like that, bang, bang, one after the other. Didn't you like apologise to one of them in the book? Like you yes, jumped through the window and you said yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, that was afterwards when I got apprehended. When okay. I, they transferred me to Wakefield. Um, it was only by chance that that they found me on that incident. They found me by a zip lighter rather than the torches. Oh wow! Oh. So 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 you're jumping through all these windows and they eventually how do they put you down then? Oh, capture me! Yeah, yeah. Um, well, on the last on the last house, I didn't hear the helicopter, so I knew they are they are coming through the houses like I am. No. Um, so I knew, but I also knew that I couldn't run the alleyways because they'd be blocking them off. So the alleyways, so the helicopter was basically watching you where you're going. Yeah, but it wasn't on the last house. Yeah, yeah. And a new time was on beside them, so by that time I've got kilos I'm caught. I jumped on the back of the bin over the wall onto the alleyway. A few feet spread me blood and backtracked on me blood and climbed back over. And I went into the gold shed and just pulled Debbie over me dead fast. No as sooner as I'd done that, they're coming through now. But but miraculously, and why they never got on it, they had to unlock the back gate. As soon as he unlocked the back gate, they let the dogs on. He said, he's got away. Fucking find him. I'm laying there thinking, hmm. It's going on for whatever period. <clears throat> Couple come over, shine the torch and don't see me. Wow. I went, that was my reaction. I thought, wow. And um It'd be worse if you opened the door, the Alsatian come in. There's just the worst of the police dogs, is there? But but I think what happened there, because of the blood, because it spread it just out the on side of the like wall. Gone they the gone way. on it again and I, I took off. Yeah. And um it was only by chance. The helicopter went then. After certain minutes it went. I knew as soon as that went, I thought they're going to call it off soon the search, but stay where you are, don't move. And it was only by chance, once come out, to light a cigarette, or cigarette, and um, the zip lighter, and he seen me. Oh. And before he even finished issuing the words, he's here, they were there, and he dragged me out. Oh. Dragged me out. Did he even get to have your fag, though? No. Bastards. Dragged me out. <laughs> You deserved a cigarette after that, I'll tell you what. No. But after that, when I was in Wakefield, you know, um, a friend of mine who works for the Guardian, Eric Allison, um, he went round to them. You know, I was apologetic. I said, I give you compensation for the damage I've done. Yeah. It wasn't intentional. You know, it was adrenaline spirit of the moment thing. And each one to You don't sign a house roll by you. You're no, just to I was just away. trying to escape. Yeah. Because feedback come from me, from somebody in Newcastle when they're raiding the houses up there. <clears throat> and he said, as soon as we get him, we're going to fucking waste him. So luckily for me, twice I've been apprehended. I've been apprehended in populated areas. Because I firmly believe he would have been secluded. It's he would have field of that, wouldn't he? He would have went waste him. And we just said he went for us with whatever. Yeah. Problem over then. When they captured you, couldn't they just take you somewhere and say you resisted and they killed kill you like that? No, because people out the windows looking. Okay. And the, and by that time they got me from the backyard to the front. The police fans were there. Yeah. Okay. So many witnesses. Look so they would they would have had to they would have sort of like how do we justify yeah, this? Yeah. Because even though we've got him, we restrained him. We've transferred him from that house to that vehicle there. So you. And no sooner as I reached the police station, within let's say the hour. People are coming saying, you know, I'm a relative, where is he? Are you bleeding like crazy because of all the wind uh, uh, Yeah, I got a few keloids on me. Yeah. You know, but I didn't even know what was cut, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Because there's adrenaline. Mm. So did they have to take you to get stitched up first? No, no, I didn't want nothing. I refused. Refused it? Yeah, doctor come yeah. and I said, I don't want nothing off you. Yeah. You know, just let them heal the way they are. Just let them heal. Yeah. Scar to scar, isn't it? <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> so what police station are you at next? Um, They took me to... That police station, they took me to, I think it was... Was it not Salford Crescent? That was the second escape. Some police station, a new police station in Liverpool. Um, which one, I don't know. I know the second time it was Salford Crescent when they took me there. But I will. Uh, I might have been, might have been. But as a result of the escape, what they done, um, two of them sitting outside the cell door, the axe down keeping watching me uh, until right. I've been transferred. The you know? and, he only, <clears throat> and he only stayed there throughout the course of the night. Yeah. 
following day, they transferred me to Wakefield segregation unit. 